Hello everyone and welcome to Keep It Classical. Today we're going to talk about the concert going experience and concert etiquette. We'll be talking a bit about things to do, things to avoid, and clapping. Yes, clapping. It's a thing. For those of you about to attend your first classical concert, that's wonderful. You are engaging with music in the best possible way, in person. I'm here to share some useful information that will help make your first experience a pleasant and rewarding one. The inspiration for this video came from a question that I posted on Instagram where I asked people, what are your concert etiquette pet peeves? And boy, did I get a response. From time to time, I post questions on Instagram about things to put into my videos here. So if you haven't followed me on Instagram yet, follow me at Matthew D. Nielsen. Performances of music have been taking place in a variety of spaces and with a wide variety of acceptable audience behaviors. These different settings include town halls, taverns, churches, concert halls, private homes, coffee shops, and so forth. Concert etiquette has actually become an issue recently with more than a few articles being written about it. There are a few things to keep in mind when attending a modern day classical performance. Make preparations. Before going to a classical music performance, make sure that you are aware of a few things. First, the length of the actual performance and any intermissions that may be a part of the evening. During a classical music performance, it's not polite to get up and leave mid-performance for almost any reason, including going to the bathroom. Make sure that if you need to use the restroom to do so before the show, or during an intermission. Now, if it's an emergency, that's one thing, but in general, make sure that you're prepared to sit for an extended period of time. Next, make sure to arrive early so that you can get your tickets from Will Call, grab a program, and find your seat without feeling rushed. If you have children under the age of eight years old, it's probably best to get a sitter and leave them at home. Your situation may vary, but bringing children too young to appreciate a performance will be a negative experience for you, your kids, and your fellow concert attendees. It should go without saying that babies should definitely stay at home. Talking. While talking might be okay during some pop music concerts, it's actually not okay to talk during a classical music performance at all. Even whispering during a performance is not okay. If a painter's medium is paint on a canvas, a musician's medium are sounds over silence. You wouldn't dare think of putting ketchup on a painting at a museum, but that's what talking feels like at a live classical performance. Cell phones. Mobile phones have permeated every part of our lives, and their use is ubiquitous with modern living. Having said that, their use in classical music performance is still a faux pas, especially during a staged work like an opera or ballet. Just put it into airplane mode and be done with it. That's not the kind of attention that you want, especially if it's at your first performance. Again, silence is our canvas. I sometimes have to remind myself, if I can't sit still and pay attention for at least an hour a day without checking my phone, I might have a problem. Concerts aren't like ball games, and even at those, you are subject to ridicule. Did that come out okay? That's the best one of the 300 pictures I've taken look, of myself look, today. Every girl in the picture is locked into her phone. Attire. The perception that I've heard from many people is that in order to attend a classical music performance, you have to get dressed to the nines in a tux with tails and some sort of ball gown. In reality, it's kind of whatever you want. That may ruffle the feathers of some of my colleagues, but really it's true. Most concert halls and opera houses don't actually have a dress code, and you won't get turned away if you aren't wearing a cummerbund. I will concede that there is something to be said about dressing for the occasion and wearing appropriate clothing for the appropriate situation. Wearing business casual is definitely the safest choice and will be what most audience members are wearing. The truth is, I would much rather have an audience full of people wearing jeans and hoodies, listening quietly, than people dressed up fancy and talking to a performance. Clapping. This is where things get confusing for most first-time concert goers and even some veterans about when to clap. 
At most popular music concerts, people typically clap and cheer after each individual song. But in classical music, one composition may be 30 minutes long and divided into different parts called movements. In these instances, you should wait until the entire work is completed and refrain from clapping between movements. In addition, some conductors want to take their time at the end of the piece and give some space and enjoy the silence. You should wait until the conductor has put their arms down before clapping. I know it sounds like classical musicians don't want you to clap at them, but in reality nothing is further from the truth. They just want you to clap at the appropriate time. Classical musicians want you to clap for them like Jeb Bush at a rally in New Hampshire. To get back in the business of creating a more peaceful world. Please clap. <sighs> that is still so deeply painful to watch. By the way, when you type in Jeb Bush into YouTube, the first autofill suggestion is please clap. I know this is a lot to remember, so here's a quick guide. Do you know how the piece ends? No, don't clap. Is the work over entirely? If no, don't clap. Have the conductor's arms come down? If no, don't clap. If yes, please clap. It'll take some time, but you'll get used to it pretty fast. Bonus, standing ovations. In North America, it's pretty standard to give a standing ovation at the end of a performance. So much so that most musicians call it the standard ovation. Here's the reality, you don't have to give a standing ovation. The only reason why you should get up is because the performance was so good that you cannot be contained in your seat. So even if everyone else is standing, if you didn't feel it, you don't have to give in to the pressure. Like our moms taught us, if everyone went and jumped off a cliff, would you do it too? I mean, if you were cliff jumping, yes you would, and then you say, yes mom, we are doing that. So let's review. Be prepared. Leave babies at home. Don't talk or whisper. Airplane mode. Wear what you want. Don't clap. Please clap. I hope that this information helped you prepare to attend your first performance of classical music. If you have any more questions about concert etiquette, feel free to leave these questions in the comments below. If you heard something you enjoyed or learned something interesting, share it with friends and family. In the meantime, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button for more videos, follow me on Instagram at Matthew D. Nielsen, and remember, keep it classical.